Hey everyone, what's going on? Shark Tank here. Now, I'm going to be a tad bit quiet because people are actually sleeping in my house, so I don't want to be too loud, so I'm sorry about that. But basically, and major, major shout outs like always to Kingdom Hearts 13 and by the, I guess, translator of both the Dengeki interview and the Ultimania D. Chiuin. And I think I've seen this dude's content on YouTube because I think like a while back he did, you know, YouTube stuff in terms of like YouTube videos. If I'm correct, I, I could be wrong about that. But either way, major shout outs to KH13 and him because they're translating this. And this is basically just a culmination of everything from the Dengeki interview with Tetsuya Nomura and from the Ultimania. Now, as far as I can tell, this isn't everything from the Ultimania or the interview, but these are like the main highlights from both all combined into like, I guess one big, I guess, culmination of information. And again, major shout outs to them. And I'm just gonna be going through this just one at a time, just stating everything that they say in here, my opinions on it and how I feel. And we're gonna be starting basically with the top one. And the first one is number one, Rage form is different to anti form. Rage form is store controlled by rage. Anti form is store controlled by darkness. Eh, okay, okay. Now, personally, I see it as more or less the same thing. Now, they're saying it's him controlled by rage, but in a way, isn't him using rage another form of darkness in a way? I don't know. But you know, it's kind of just a whatever thing. Again, it's more or less the same, so it's not a super big thing to me. But anyway, on to number two. How Xion Return will be explained in DLC. Now, I already made a video about this talking about how I feel about that, so I'm gonna kinda wrap it up in this one. I'm extremely happy they're doing this. I was extremely angry when they never explained how she came back, so I'm happy about that. So I'm not gonna go too much into that one. If you wanna see how I fully feel about that, check out the video that I made. On to number three though. The girl that Lee and Isa are looking for has already appeared in the series, and players can probably guess who it is from the game's secret reports. However, the person that talked about in the secret reports is said to not be Ava. This seems to point towards Skull, and that's Cage 13 saying how they feel. And yeah, yeah. So they're saying right here that whoever this person that we see, the nameless star that we see in the game, and whoever this nameless, mysterious girl that Lee and Isa know, uh, well, one, it's not Ava, and two, it's someone we've already seen in the game, and yeah, it's insanely, insanely, when, basically 100% confirmed that it's either Strelitzia or Skull in terms of the two people. How I feel? I honestly believe, as of right now, that the nameless star is Strelitzia, and that the mysterious girl that Leah Isa know is Skull, but again... Uh, it, none of this is confirmed, even though it basically is confirmed. It's just not confirmed as to which is which in terms of what position, who is the nameless star, who is the mysterious girl. But I now basically 90 to 100% believe it's now those two because they're now confirming that. And now they're also confirming that it's not Ava. And that's kind of to be confirmed also because, you know, the nameless star, it doesn't sound like Ava basically at all. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, though, on to number four. Who the Nameless Star is will be revealed later. Now, this can be a number of things. Either they mean in terms of DLC and updates, because they have confirmed that DLC is coming to the game, or they do mean in the, I guess, confirmed side game that they have confirmed, I made a video on that also, or they mean in the next installment game, which would be Kingdom Hearts 4. And honestly, I want to assume that because I would love it to be j just DLC that they explain it in that game but I honestly I don't believe that I they purposely left it to be open up to I guess a mysterious vibe that would be revealed later down the line in the next Kingdom Hearts game or game after so I do believe that either it's in the side game or the next main installment game now on to number five Scala at Kylum and Daybreak Town are connected in some way there should be hints if looked upon closely uh, yeah, we know that, because basically, and again, spoiler warning about the final boss, uh, in one of the boss sections in the mid-boss fight, you're underwater, and you're underneath Scala at Kylum, and literally you see underneath Scala at Kylum, you literally see the Daybreak Town clock tower underneath Scala at Kylum. Somehow, they literally turned the whole world upside down and built Scala at Kylum, uh, uh, literally atop of uh, Daybreak Town. How they do that, I have no idea, and I'm assuming that's all going to be explained in the mobile key, you know, Union Cross games, and yeah, we just have to wait and see how they do that, because I literally have no idea how they did that. They literally turned the whole world upside down, and yeah. 
On to number six though, or if I'm saying that right, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, six. On to number six. Now this is actually really, really interesting. The armored figures in Scala et Kylum are replicas. Okay, 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 replicas. I mean, see, what they gave off, the presence they gave off in the final battle trailer was that basically, you know, Master Xehanort, he gets Kingdom Hearts, right? And he has all the power. He has a Keyblade. He has Kingdom Hearts. And with that, he now takes on a brand new form along with all of the 13 Seekers of Darkness. And they transform into this brand new form. That was the presence they were giving off. That they transform into something more than human. And that's what I thought until we find out in the game that, you know, we beat them all. And then somehow these new people are just there. And it's like, what? What? And... The thing that doesn't make sense is, right, no one else was left in the Keyblade Graveyard, and then once Sora does what he does to, I guess, send Xehanort back in time to Scala at Kylum, how did he summon all of these replicas there? I don't know, that's really weird, but, okay, apparently the armored figures in Scala at Kylum are replicas, and, okay then, on to number seven. There is a reason that we don't know what happened to Demix. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna rant a tad bit. If there was a reason, we should have seen that in Kingdom Hearts 3. Because, like, literally, when I beat the game and the credits rolled, I literally said to myself out loud, Wait, what happened to Demix? What happened to Demix? We never see him again. It was like, we see him with Ansem, and that was it. We never see him again after. Not even in the, I guess, kind of, like, last bit of the game before the credits roll, where we see Ansem, you know, rebuild or help nominate come back. And it's like, what happened to Demix? And there is a reason that we don't see him. So if there was a reason, I feel like we should. Like I feel like we should have seen that. And I feel like whatever the reason is, it's connected to how. And I guess spoiler warning to a degree that he is connected back to the Keyblade War, you know, hundreds of years ago. Because it's confirmed. It, it, it hasn't been confirmed exactly entirely, but at the same time, it's confirmed. And I don't know, like, maybe we should have seen something where, like, I don't know, he's walking and then some mysterious figure grabs him, takes him away, and that's the last we see him? That would have been better than just not seeing him at all, because, like, the last time we see him, he's happy how he kind of helped a tad bit on the, you know, good guys team, and that's it. I don't know, I don't know, we never see him again after. Now, here we go. Regarding the secret movie, this is where it gets a tad bit more interesting. The epilogue in Secret Movie will be explained later. Okay, now I'm assuming that what they mean by that is either one in an interview, or in some kind of new information released by Tetsuya Nomura, or two, they mean it's going to be expanded upon and actually explained what that was or where it's leading to in the next, I guess, spin-off game or next installment, which would be Kingdom Hearts 4. That's what I believe. And again, it's more all up in the air. Nothing is confirmed. That's just how I believe and feel. On to the next. I guess number two for this. The secret movie isn't as complex or isn't as simple as people think it is. There hasn't been enough information revealed to the players yet. Okay, I don't want to say how I feel about the secret movie. All I'll say is that, you know, it's trash. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I have to be honest. I have to be honest. I do not like the secret movie. I think it was really bad. I think it's honestly the worst secret movie we have ever had in the entirety of the whole, I guess, series. And for reasons I'll may, I may make a video on later on, but I don't know. I just did not like that secret movie at all. It was so vague in what it was trying to convey. It was like, it left you more confused than confused and satisfied at the same time. Cause like, for example, uh, the ending to Kingdom Hearts 2, it was vague, but at the same time, very interesting at the same time because the clues and context behind what was happening in the background made you question and theorize. There was nothing to theorize in the end of the Kingdom Hearts 3 secret ending. All we know now is that it's now confirmed that, you know, Sora's okay. Somehow Riku ends up with where Sora is. You know, we lose all the weight of what happened at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3 where we think Sora is dead. So it's like, yeah, yeah. But again, they're saying here that there hasn't been enough information revealed to the players yet. So I'm assuming, you know, that it's going to be explained later on, like they said, you know, back up here. But yeah, though. But anyway, on to number three. We promised Neku back in Kingdom Hearts DDD that we will return to Shibuya. 
but this time isn't directly connected to it. This Shibuya is in a different reality compared to the real one. So this kind of debunked the theory that at the end of the secret ending that that is Shibuya. It's not Shibuya. They're saying outright here that this is not Shibuya. This is a different Shibuya in a different reality compared to that one. Even though the sign at the top of it is 104, I think. And that's the same sign number that they show off in the World of Ends With You game. So I guess that's not the real Shibuya then. That theory is now officially debunked. It's not Shibuya. We're not doing the Reapers game. That's not that. Okay. And in terms of where this Shibuya is and what kind of world this is, I don't know. The only thing I can assume that it is connected to Virum Rex that we see in the, I guess, secret ending of the game. And yeah. Anyway, though, on to number four. People might assume that Virum Rex is the same title as a game Nomura was planning in the past, Versus 13. But he says it isn't. Bro, Nomura. Dude, I, I, I gotta be raw with you, dude. Don't get me wrong, dude, you're amazing. You make amazing games, I feel like. You, you're awesome, dude. But that's some bull. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, dude, that is some bull. I do not believe any of that at all. No, no, no. Like, and again, Virum Rex even translates out to true king. It's like, what? No, and all the characters in Virum Rex looks insanely similar to Final Fantasy XV. You copy so many elements from Final Fantasy XV and perfect them in Kingdom Hearts 3, and it's like, from Remy and all the stuff he does in cooking to so many other things, it's like, no, I don't believe that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. No, no. It's okay to be salty. It's okay to be salty. I'm salty all the time. Hey, you know, it's no big deal, dude. I truly do not believe... I, I don't believe that. I just don't believe that. I, I really don't. I have to be honest about that. If you think that, okay, I'm gonna believe what I believe, you believe what you believe, and they. <laughs> uh, but yeah, though. Anyway, onto the last bit of information as of right now in this whole conglomerate of information. The black figure in the secret movie making a heart towards the moon with his fingers was the master of masters. And, yeah, it's confirmed. That's something I also speculated to. Some other people kind of speculated that also. Because, basically, as you see in back cover, when he walks, he puts his hands behind his back in a way where it's like his left hand is above his right hand while he's walking. And as we see in the secret ending, whoever this mysterious figure was is doing the exact same thing. And when I saw that, I was like, wait, is this dude the Master of Masters? That's what I'm assuming now, because he does the same exact thing, right? And yeah, it's confirmed right here. This dude that we see at the end of the secret ending was the Master of Masters. Uh, where has he been this entire time? How is he not old or just dead? I don't know. Maybe it could be the same way that Lushu kind of survived this whole time by jumping from body to body. And yeah, and as to what he's trying to do, what his plans are, what Lushu's plans are, what's in the box, we just do not know. And we're not going to find out. Chances are until the next, I guess, installment of Kingdom Hearts, which would be Kingdom Hearts 4. Okay, hold the phone. I know what I was about to end the video. Uh, yeah, no, it's going to have to wait one more second. One more huge bit of information has now released now. It's blowing up my Twitter. Multiple people are now talking about this. Apparently, one more bit of information. I'm not sure whether or not it's coming from Dengeki or from the Ultimania itself, but apparently it's now confirmed here from Nomura that the tutorial bit, the part where you're in the Station of Awakening, all that, apparently, in terms of where that takes place in the story, that now officially confirms, it's officially confirmed now, that takes place at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3. What? Okay. I cannot yell, people are sleeping, but what the heck? Okay, and again, this is now blowing up my Twitter right now. People are saying this all over. I'm like, wait, like what the heck? I, I see that one time. I'm like, wait, are you sure? What are you talking about? Multiple people are saying this now and I'm like, wait, what? And yeah, it's confirmed. So the tutorial takes place at the end of Kingdom Hearts 3, but we play it in the beginning. What does that mean? What does that mean? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. And new renders are appearing also, but, you know, it, it, it's renders and, you know, it's cool and whatnot. But this information, I just, I just don't know. I don't know. I literally just don't know. And, yeah, this should be the last bit of information. If more new information appears, I'll make another video on it. I just have to say this last bit also because this is like a, whoa, the tutorial to Kingdom Hearts 3 takes place at the ending of 
Kingdom Hearts 3 in terms of where it takes place in the story, but we play it in the beginning. That's crazy. Okay, back to the ending of the video now. And yeah, guys, that's it. This is the whole bit of information that has released from the Dengeki magazine and from the Ultimania. Now, more information can drop from here onwards. I'm not sure if there is or any really big information. You know, I'll talk about it to give my thoughts and opinions on it. And thank you, Kingdom Hearts 13, for, I guess, giving this whole big conglomerate of information. And to you, dude, for, I, again, I'm going to butcher your name. I'm sorry. But these chiushis? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I'm trying to translate it but thank you dudes and thank you all down here for the translations also you all people are amazing i love you guys's website your content overall and yeah guys that's about it in terms of all this information if you like the video leave a like down below if you want to comment and tell me how you feel about the video or about the information tell me in the comment sections down below and if you like my content overall subscribe to me guys that'd be awesome this is shark tank i'll see you on the next one guys have a great awesome and amazing day guys peace